Oh, hi, amigos. I'm Whitney. La Echicena del Horror of Witchcraft and Gore. And I am your sorceress of terror with horror and folklore. So welcome to my creative and creepy conjurings. Here I am presenting horror folklore and my feature is La Lechusa. And La Lechusa translates to the barn owl. So today I will be talking about the folklore and the actual creature itself, the barn owl, as I demonstrate and work out this drawing in comparison and contrast to the legend and this beautiful creature, the bird. So this is my second YouTube video. First time doing art though, second time. This is art in general, because my first one was a makeup demo. And my first video was of the Nawal. So if you haven't seen that, feel free to, it's there. So, hmm. I, I have been working on this owl, on La Lechusa. And she is in progress here. I'm using a Q-tip to fill out and um, blend out with water from my brush pen strokes. It's almost <laughs> in comparison to makeup, the way I like to move my, my colors around and blending. Um, Q-tip is my best friend. One of my favorite tools, actually. But as I work on La Lechusa, my La Lechusa, the witch, that's what La Lechusa is. She is a female witch. But how does she become a female witch? How does she become this thing? Now let me dive into this a little bit. I will soar into this creature. La Lechusa like the owl, has a full body of an owl, has wings of an owl, and sometimes it even cries like the owl. But what sets it apart is that her appearance is more elder in the face. But why? Why does she carry her human features in her face? Now, she carries her human features because, according to legend, she has given up her soul. And when this creature takes form of an owl, she can only be an owl by night, but with her features like that of a crone and of herself, partially. But by day, sometimes she can be seen as herself as her true human form. But how? How does one become this? People believe it's through a curse. And I have a story to tell about one way La Chusa becomes one like this. A village woman met with the devil and when she met with him, she said she was so desperate for help because her husband went missing and nobody in her village had helped her. Nobody felt sorry for her. In fact, people suspected that she killed her husband herself. But she said she loved her husband. It's me, esposo. That's what she would say. That's her husband. Esposo's husband. She wanted him back. And so the devil said, if you loved your husband so much, there's a price to pay if you want my help. I'll do anything, she said. Would you sell your soul? She said, anything. All right, but there's a price. So 
So she paid the price. She sold her soul. What did she get in return? The devil told her, thank you for your soul. Now that you have given this to me, I have given you wings. I have given you magic. I have given you power so that you can find your husband. And now as we talk about her wings of magic, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in a little bit. Her wings. So she soared throughout the night with her new nocturnal nature, with her piercing dark eyes, she soared looking for her husband in hopes that she could find him. She grew desperate, this woman. She searched all over the valleys. She searched all over the deserts. Still no sign of her husband. And she began to worry. She began to cry. She became La Lechusa with magic wings and magic powers. She didn't feel so powerful because she was so in love. And that love was gone. Because the most powerful magic of all is not with her. And well, that was her love. She cried so much. And it was so heartbreaking that her cries were not like that of a bird or a hoot of an owl. It turned into the most heartbreaking cry that was so heart-wrenching that it sounded like a child. People believe that Lala Chusa's cries are manipulated by magic to sound like that of an infant, like a baby crying, to bewitch people, to attract people and to scare them and turn them to prey, and that they will hunt them, and that they will eat them, devour the humans so that it could nourish their magic and well-being. But this woman didn't really care so much about the magic. She didn't care about the well-being of herself. She wanted her husband. And she was so different from most Machusas. The devil said, you have all the power in the world. Why are you like this? I gave you magic. Aren't you not thankful? So she flew away, knowing that she was still cursed. She had nothing to say, nothing to say to this devil. But as she cried, she distracted some of the village people and scared a man, a village man, who came out and cursed at her via al diablo, which means go back to hell, go to the devil. Because people believe, some believe, that if you curse it, a lechusa, la lechusa, a witch like this, that's how you get rid of them. And it hurt her when he told her this. But not as much as it hurt when he shot her and killed her. Now the man, the village that man who had killed her, he watched her as she died and he watched her take her human form in her death. Now, the woman, she was never to see her true love again because she sold her soul and who knew where her husband went. And that's one of the many stories. This one, I think, is a little bit more tragic because she didn't want to be evil. She was just so desperate to find what was lost, her love. 
Some people, like this village man, believe that you can kill a Lechusa with a gun. Not a Lechusa. Not all can be killed by a gun. Some people believe the only way you can get rid of them is say Vaya and Diablo, curse them away. Because they feel that their power has more strength than some bullet. I don't know. Legends are funny. And for this one in particular, she's, she's a complex kind of creature, just like the owl. But I feel that the Lechusa stories have made such a beautiful creature seems so ugly and owls are not ugly or monstrous <laughs> but according to legend they can be now some believe that the lechusa has hair and that's what i'm doing i'm giving her some hair and that shifts forming into the wings because that's all they can keep is that part of their identity is from the head up with these features. Now I'm going to go a little deeper to finish off some of her features here on her beak like nose. Give her her laugh lines. Make her elder and beautiful. And give her some lines in her lips and define that her chin a little bit but with the differences in this creature and in the actual owl itself what i think is beautiful is just how the feathers have various colors to the actual owl itself, which I'll transform here in a little bit. They say that La Lechusa, she has dark hair. And that's what I'm doing. I'm giving her some dark hair because I've given her some purple. And I'm going to bring that out. I'll accent some wrinkles down here. Give her her laugh lines. And deep set that lip. So I told this one story, right? And variations of other stories. I've said, well, La Lechusa, she tried to attack, attack a woman who had a child. And the woman who had fended for her child, what did she do? She cursed the witch away. She cursed the La Lechusa away. And La Lechusa never bothered her anymore because the woman felt that Lana Chusa was after her kid. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe she was. Maybe she had some kind of score to settle with the woman in that one legend. You know, in various world beliefs, they believe that an owl, when you hear a hooting of an owl, that that is a sign of death, that is a bringer sound of some kind of omen, a warning. And I respect that. I respect cultures and beliefs and warning signs, omens. And speaking of omens, I had mentioned in my previous video that, you know, there have been warning signs of creatures making certain sounds, bringing awareness to certain things that were about to happen. But I also talked about totem animals. And some pagan cultures believe that owls are mystical protectors. And I thought that was a beautiful kind of thing to look at in that sense from pagan tribes in Europe. But in indigenous culture, there is this deep feeling and belief set that 
these animals are the totem spirit of the other world and death to respect that. That when you hear the hooing, that hooting, that is the sign of what's to come from the other world. And some people, especially indigenous backgrounds and regions from Texas and Mexico and further, believe in that as well. And I believe that has carried in and transitioned to La Lechusa here. That she is a warning, that she is the legend of the warning to respect that kind of belief in a way. But actually, when I think of respect for the owl, I think of something that has been close to me in my own family. Now with this next story, there is a boy. And this boy, he was 13 years old. And when he was 13, he had been out working a farm. And when he was working, he had felt like he was being watched. Or was he? And then all of a sudden, during the day, this owl swoops down over him. <sighs> scares the life out of him. Almost scared the living caca out of him, is what you would say. It's poop, is what he says. And then he ran home. And when he ran home, he told his siblings, his sister, he told his sister, this owl came flying at me while I was working. I, so I ran. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. And his sister told him, well, maybe it was La Lajosa. <laughs> but this boy, he, he had respected this animal. He's like, so he questioned it. And he didn't really have much fear after that, after he had learned that this thing wasn't being personal with him. He learned that it was just hunting. Part of him felt like he was he should be afraid because his sister had told him that it could have been La Lechusa after you. But also he knew that his sister loved to tell stories and he knew that she loved legends and that was her way of getting back at her sisters and brothers after going through certain things like the trickster life and relationships that siblings have. Well, that boy was my father. <laughs> and that woman was my aunt. Now, the reason why I know my father respected this owl and these creatures is because my entire family on that farm in Mexico. They loved what they felt was personal to them, was, you know, having such a beautiful creature just be part of the land, just be part of that environment. They felt that these things had the respect of what most nature should, the existence just to exist, to live. Because I knew that, like any other animal, it does our environment so much good. I mean, throughout the valleys and throughout farms and various areas, we know these things scavenge, these things hunt. 
but especially for my own family, for my dad, when he grew up on a farm and he had to work among his siblings and my grandfather and everyone, that they would uh, depend so much on, on nature and not just, you know, of course their work, but nature had the balance. There was a delicate balance. And in that delicate balance, there's vermin, there's mice, there's snakes, you know, and with, with all of that around, they had hoped that some of these animals, this lechusa, would, would be of some good help. Because of course they go after those vermin and creatures that, that eat the smaller creatures. And um, the snakes and all of those things that in order to keep things in order. And it was a way of how my father and how that side of the family would think that it keeps things in the balance. And with that balance, there's the respect that they have. And I think we should have respect for that balance and that life. Some time ago, I heard from my father about this owl. The actual owl that exists. Who knows about that, that Chusa? But there were some owls, like I said, that um, my, my family and that side that they, they knew would come around the area and hunt near the farm and all of that areas in the regions. But um, also, I just extended that beak a little too much. But anyway, in... Uh, In the area, surrounding area in the farm, I think it was about five or six years ago, my uncle was really upset that one of the two owls that had stayed around the farm, that he had discovered, was shot and killed. And this upset my, my uncle, when, and it upset my grandfather apparently as well, because this owl with the other one, like I said, it did wonders for the area, the farm, and the respect that they had for this thing that would, you know, the living and keeping a balance in nature and, and then we're just one down. What also upset them was the person who did it and how they did it. It was on their property. My dad says, how can someone kill such a beautiful creature for no reason? But my uncle and my father and my grandfather, it seems like some people have an ignorant view on animal life. If there's no preservation, if there's no use for the feathers, the meat, why? But according to lore, and what some people believe, my, my father and my uncle and my grandfather, like, they don't understand, but they could only draw their conclusion was because of superstition. And that it was only because of superstition. They thought, they were pretty sure whoever did it, that they took the owl's life for superstitious reasons. Well, if that's true, I don't get it either. But then again, it falls back on the legend a little bit some people believe if if you kill a lechusa, if you set out to do it, 
do it because if you don't shoot it properly, then you will be cursed. You will be the one to die. And that's the thinking that came to my family's mind that they thought whoever did it had that kind of mentality, that they had some kind of notion and feeling that maybe they were cursed and were trying to let go of something of that matter. I don't know, but I stand on my father's side and my dad, um, in a way with preserving animal life and respecting owls and their existence. Because they really do. These are, these are beautiful creatures. They really, they really do have a, a way of life to preserve our nature um, and keeping a balance. I do agree with that. So in a way, that's kind of a magical thing itself. Nature is full of power, don't you think? I do. So I have used some, I've talked quite a bit about the lore, but let me talk about this artwork here. So I have given my owl shades of gray, some black, giving it deep set eyes, deep eyes, deep eyes. I'm trying to make it a little bit more oval and piercing, upward, oval, swooping. And so I'm using brush pens and like this barn owl, I'm kind of giving a little bit of a bigger head than what, what barn owl would typically do. Now I'm keeping my detail kind of light, but I'm going to make the feather go a little dark. And how I'm going to do that is I kind of brushed with this edge of my brush pen, I feathered where I'm going to add my shadow. I'll take this Q-tip and dab it in a little bit of water and I'll blend it. And blend. That way you can see some of the shadow inside of the wing. There we go. Look at that beautiful creature. And then out here, I'm extending his wing a little bit because I have his wing or her wing. What's interesting, I'm saying his and her wing. Um, I'm gonna go in here in the chest soon because females tend to have, they have more spots on their chest than other birds. Darker, um, yes, the female barn owl tends to have more spots than the male on their chest. And what's interesting in the folklore in comparison to La Lechusa, some people have said and claimed that La Lechusa, that it's not just in the face when she has taken form. Some people have described her as actually carrying herself as most of the body, not only in her face, but you can see the breast. Not the chicken breast or, or owl breast. Why did I say chicken? What in the chili I know? What did I do that for? <laughs> anyway, um, so, but that I didn't draw that, obviously. I gave her some spots, like I did here. I gave this owl some spots and I'm blending it, shadowing and shading. I'm going to give her some spots as well. Um, 
And I'll blend her up a little bit. And then I'll darken her some a little bit as well. Because some people, like I say, they believe in contrast, and contrary to the actual Barno. But now that you said her wings are darker or gray, sometimes even black. So I'll actually darken her up a little bit. See, when I see a line, like you see here, I like to carry that, blend that line with my thick boulder lines. Blend them. I have this thick bold line showing the wing, blending and blend it down here. A bold line, blend it with that line. more right here and then this is the part where I play with the dots a little bit with the dark because the original owl like I said the original barn owl has dark a dark chest not a dark chest but dark spots Pulling that down, blending the wing, making her wing show. Blend that up to feathers. I'm trying to make it look like her feathers are prominent. And fade her out. I'm fading her out a little bit. Bringing her because she's no. I feel like her face needs a little bit more. Oop. Need to find her, her chin. I think I'll deepen her lines a little bit, give her a little bit more black, and give her more of her wrinkles. And then I'll do a clean side of a Q-tip so I can blend. A little bit more on her face. So when you decide to take a brush pen and you're doing your lights and your darks, be very cautious because when you use your darks, you can spread out and spread out but so much. Because see, I took my black and I went up here to the cheeks and I knew I wanted to blend those out a little bit more so that they can darken in the cheeks. So start out light always if you're going to work with pens and brush pens and that sort of thing with your medium. And see, because I, I did this because I wanted to make her chin pop a little bit. I wanted to accent that a little bit. I don't want to take away too much purple from the bottom of her lip because I feel like it gives her a, a little bit more of that ethereal look to her nature. Like I said, I love lavenders and purples. We'll give her some wrinkles to extend to her hair. Again, when you're working something like this, take the cleanest part of your Q-tip. Actually, I should probably get a, a new one if you want to work your, your lines a little bit more. So, I think my Lechusa, La Lechusa, I think she's done. But I'm gonna go ahead and touch up a little bit on my, on um, the Barno itself. Give, give her some more. Uh, to her chest, not too much, but just a little, and put an emphasis on her, on her wing, accent this, shadow it a little bit, 
give her some shadow. It's just, she's so light and I think I just dropped a pen. Accent those eyes. And then give her some of her little bumps. Spots, I mean. And then I'll give her some talons. Go really light with your pen if you're working dark, because this is what I'm doing. Because I want to make sure I kind of separate her head a little bit from her feather in her chest so I can break up those spots and separate the feather portion of her her head a little bit. Now I see I brought a little bit too much color in, but see I wanted to separate and blend it. Now you can see where the head is. Now I'm going to continue to shadow in this wing because I want to put a little bit more dark on the edge of my Q-tip. I'm going to do that here, spot, spot on the spots. Spot her a little bit. Now, if you enjoy watercolor painting and you haven't worked with brush pens, I think most people, if you work with watercolor painting and you want to switch to brush pens or play with them, I say go for it because they're so much fun. And you can move around the color. It's, it's honestly one of my favorite mediums. That's why I chose to do this today. Uh, see the spots. I'm gonna dab those. Don't circle so much, just dab them. Especially where you keep the dark of your Q-tip, where you have the most color, just spot them. Spot, dab, dab, see? That way you can keep those spots because these owls, the female ones especially, like you said, they have more spots than the males. Now, I think I'll give her a little uh, shadow up top. Oops. I can always break that up. I did that a little. Now, if you feel like you did make a mistake, I I know Bob Ross says there's only happy ones, <laughs> but um, take that color on a clean edge of a Q-tip and move it around. If you want to add more depth in the feathery senses and the areas in those light creases, go ahead and dab it around. Move that color around just a little bit, but make sure you keep your Q-tip a little bit more damp. I'm just trying to kind of separate a little bit and make sure I have that accent down to kind of give it that V look. And separate a little bit down here. So, yeah, she can have her shadow. All right, I'm gonna take my lightest brush, not brush, my lightest um, pen. Where did I put it? I think I dropped it. Yes, my lavender one. I'm not gonna blend anymore. I think 
this is about it for my drawing. As far as my light colors go, I'll give her some lavender. Uh, and then find a gray to separate because I have kind of a heart-shaped face. And that's what I did with the witch a little bit. Uh, that just uh, over here. I, I decided to kind of keep her heart feature in here, like where it dips down in the middle, like that V peak, like uh, that vampire hair, widow's peak kind of look. But yeah, owls have uh, have that distinct nature in that widow's peak and that heart-shaped face. Uh, you don't have to go too crazy on the, the feathering. I think when you decide to use brush pens, it kind of works itself out if you use a Q-tip. Uh, like, like I said, you can blend careful with the blending though don't take out too much color but just enough that you can have your lines pop you can always work in your shadows that's what i love about it and uh, i think i'm gonna go ahead and work in on her talons after i finish this shadow So with that, you know, people have said that La La Chusa, she hunts for people, right? With her talons, she'll go and claw them in as if they're, that's her prey. But these, but the talons here, in comparison with this creature, again, full figured of an owl. I didn't give myself enough room to do talons here, so I'm going to show you how I do talons here. So I'll take a, a light gray, and I'm going to extend, still, still hidden in the wing a little bit, and I'm going to, oh, excuse me. So it's perching on a branch, and then I'm going to pull one talon here, I'm going to drop it down here, and I'm going to pull this branch over. Actually, I think I'll switch pens because my branches are dark. I'll switch pens off and on. Don't be like me. <laughs> So, okay, here's the leg. I'm feathering out this leg a little bit, but then I'm going to feather this one. I think I gave that one a little too much. Um, but here's the branch, see? The branch is hiding under that back talon. Now this front talon is right here, and then the other partial edge of this talon is curved in. And now here I'm doing the same thing. The back talon, I'm curving it because this one is in the back. And I'm curving this one in. And then the other one is perching to fold on this side. Now, look, I think that back one is a little thick, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. If something seems too thick and you want the color to cover, again, blend. You can always blend. But yeah, according to lore, see this thing 
clutches its prey. The Lalachu says she clutches her prey, she she eats it. It's a human to keep her nourished with her power. But I think we all need nourishment when it comes to our food, right? To create our own ways of magic and go about our day. Same goes for this beautiful creature. Shading in the back a little bit. Give it some depth. Actually, I think I'm going to pull the wing a little more forward because I extended that that edge of that towel and in the back. Uh, I'm going to keep it hidden. You can always do that when you want something to adjust with your art. And I'm doing, I think I finished my owl. So these are the predatory talons. Here she is just chilling on her branch. And I believe we've basically covered what I could think of on La Lechusa and the barn owl. So if you have anything else to say and you have some information on this creature, on the owl, or even on La Lechusa, the witch herself, feel free to let me know because I love learning new things. And I love folklore, I love horror, I love stories, I love nature. And I also think with all of that being said, I like to echo on, I think we should give a hoot about animal advocacy with conserving what we can for animals and their lifespans. Yes, I used a pun. <laughs> But um, if you enjoyed watching this, if you enjoyed my art in this kind of fun, um, join me again next time. So I think it's about time that I wrap this up and just want to say thanks from the bottom of my little black heart. I am Whitney. La Echicera del Horror, uh, Witchcraft and Gore, your sorceress of terror. And so, subscribe to my channel, uh, follow and creep up with the rest of my socials. My, my art and makeup is available on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Whitney M. Goyasa, Facebook, and Witchcraft and Gore on Instagram. Uh, and also, I am teaching some makeup workshops coming up. If you want to learn some tips and tricks from my makeup,